At last, we've arrived at Syrup Castle, the final world of Wario Land. We've got one final boss and two more hidden treasures to find. So let's delve right into this world and take on Course 37. I do like that there's a bit of environmental continuity here. We're just leaving the Parsley Woods, so we're still sort of on the outskirts of the forest before we enter the castle proper. And like any self-respecting forest stage, we have to dodge these huge spike balls falling from the treetops. Which I suppose does make sense, this is Captain Syrup's last line of defense before we enter the castle. So her crew is going to be throwing everything they've got left at us to stop us from getting in. But we won't be deterred, we're going to get that statue and trade it in for lots of reward money to buy a fantastic new castle with. Of course, there's no reason not to take Captain Syrup's other treasures and coins while we're here. Oh yeah, Wario wants all the coins! <laughs> and with that as his driving motivation, I don't think anything can stop him from getting in. Let's just dodge this and take care of these enemies. <laughs> if I can pick them up, there we go. Incidentally, this is also the very last stage in the game with this particular background music, the main theme of Wario Land that played in Course 1 and many other courses throughout the game. Ah good, I despawned that spike ball now to duck under here. And it looks like I'm Dragon Wario. Can't really clear that. I guess I can. But it looks like I'm Dragon Wario anyway. Let's just take him and proceed through the rest of the stage, which isn't long at this point. We're almost at the end. But we do want to do something before we leave the stage, as you'll see in just a moment. But first, some more items. Let's just get down here. Let's be careful not to fall in the muncher pit like this boom just did. Alright, so here's our key. Where could the treasure vault be? Well, we just walk through the wall. Most obvious vault in the game, right guys? Let's just go in here and see what we've won. And it's a whale. Hopefully an ornament or a uh, sculpture of a whale and not an actual endangered species that's being traded for money here. Anyway, let's go finish the stage. That, of course, gives us 14 out of the game's 15 hidden treasures, just one more to find. Anyway, let's just go in here, avoid these fireballs and moles, and finish up the stage. I actually do really like this smooth transition, how you enter the castle at the end of the course, before the rest of the levels, which do take place inside of the castle. It's a nice touch. I like it. And now, on to course 38. Take note of that ladder underneath the box. Once again, we'll be hitting a switch to rearrange the layout of this room. And now that we've hit that, all those items, enemies, and most importantly, the ladder are now accessible. Now, we could... hit the switch again to get that heart and that bull hat, but I'm not going to bother with it. In fact, Dragon Wario is surprisingly efficient at quickly destroying these blocks. So let's just get these out of the way. I think this section of the stage does drag on a little bit too long, but overall it's not too bad. This room just has three of these knife-throwing pirates, so thanks to Dragon Wario, I'll dispose of them from a distance and move on. Now we saw one of these flame turrets at the end of the previous stage, but now we're going to encounter a whole room filled with them. You just want to climb these ladders and slowly and carefully avoid being hit by the fire. Of course, we do want all these coins. Concerns for personal safety fly out the window when money is involved. Say what you will about Wario, but he does work to get paid. Oh, 
let's get this jet power up, which is, frankly, far more helpful than the dragon had in this room. There we go. Now, because Wario is a lot bigger than Mario, his hitbox is also bigger, so these tight passageways make it a little bit harder to dodge enemy fire. But hey, we managed it, okay? Ah, uh, let's see if there's anything I can throw into this chicken. Now, these enemies, despite being covered in spikes, are perfectly safe to pick up as long as they fall on the ground. How nice. Oh, uh, I don't think I can... Maybe I can. <laughs> uh, never mind. Let's just move on. And in this room, we come across the final star man of the entire game. So let's just quickly mow through these enemies before we make our way through the next room. And we should be getting a 1-up here. Perfect. Nothing in this room but this solitary enemy, so let's move on. And we have another vertical segment. Let's be very careful as we hop from ladder to ladder to reach the top of this room. As I'm demonstrating, Jet Wario makes it much easier to bypass some of these jumps. Now in this room, after we clear this mole, we're going to be ducking under these blades. So let's just first go back and get that jet power up. Oh boy, this is going to be tricky. You want to duck walk behind him and accidentally let go of the uh, D-pad and go up anyway. <laughs> That's okay though, because we had an extra hit and we have activated this switch, clearing the level. One has to wonder why Captain Syrup installed this gigantic self-destruct switch in her own castle, but eh, who am I to question things? And with that, we only have two more stages to go until we've cleared the game. Let's move on to Course 39. So this stage gives us a nice change of scenery. Instead of a dank dungeon, we're up on the tall towers of Syrup Castle. In that regard, this level is much more of a straightforward run-and-jump affair, which I'm all for. It's certainly faster paced than Course 38 was. Let's just bypass this bird altogether, shall we? This one too. Not too much in these boxes, but let's get them anyway. Now, Bull Wario is your best bet for this stage for a number of reasons. Up ahead is one of them. We're going to be needing him to crash through the floor here. Right here, in fact. And we'll be needing to do the same thing ahead. Out of our way, Gooms. We've got treasure to loot. <laughs> now, let's see if I can duck under these blades without accidentally releasing the control pad this time. There we go. Not too difficult. And now we wait. Let's just take care of this Goom and proceed. Since I'm Bull Wario already, we'll just leave that there. And we've got more smiley springs. This is a really fun part of the level as we go springing across these wide gaps. Just get a nice start and use the momentum to fly across the stage. Now in here is one of the most dangerous midpoints in the game as we dodge these fireballs and leap over lava just to get a checkpoint. But it's there if you want to use it. Anyway, let's continue through the stage. Again, use the spring and leap over this gap. And this is why we needed to keep Bull Wario. Let's destroy these blocks and use these springs to get up to a hidden area. Again, I love the starry background here. Now, let's just enter this room. 
And first, let's head up in this direction to get our key. Then we simply head back to the left side to use it on the vaults. We're going to leave this here for now because first we need to break these blocks down. So let's just take a moment to do that. And now let's go back and get the key. And now for the final treasure of the game, this lovely ring. That's it, we've got all 15 treasures, which means we have nothing more to find and can focus on simply getting to the end of the stage now. I'll see you back on the main path after the break. So we have just a bit more platforming before we get to the end of the stage. First, let's take care of the ducks in this hallway before entering a door right ahead. Now, these skull lifts work exactly the same way as the girder platforms from Super Mario Bros. They simply move vertically in a single direction, so you want to carefully hop across them. Due to Wario's size, it's a bit harder to be precise with your jumps, so just take your time. Not too much, of course. You are heading toward the lava, after all. Now, this is one of the hardest jumps in the game, but it's not too bad. Just align yourself right, do a charge jump, and you're good. And we're in another single enemy room. This castle seems fond of those. And as soon as we hit that switch, we are done with course 39. Again, Captain Syrup, I'm not one to question your design methods, but... I think all these self-destruct blocks might be a bit dangerous. I don't know, just a thought. And now we enter the final stage of the game, Course 40, where we face off against our nemesis, Captain Syrup. So this stage is a ton of fun, lots of jumping, lots of smile springs, lots of coins everywhere. It's the perfect way to end Wario Land. That said, while it is fun, it's still definitely challenging. The stage definitely keeps you on your toes, and it feels appropriate for a final stage. Appropriately enough, this is also the only stage in the game that plays the particular background music you're listening to now. While Jet Wario would be nice for added mobility, Bull Wario is good for getting these blocks. Let's just get this one as well before moving on. We want to be symmetrical after all. There really are so many coins in this stage, which is again only fitting, this is a pirate's fortress after all. Let's just try to grab as many as we can as we make our way across. So here's another heavily guarded midpoint. If you make your way down this ladder, you'll see another flame turret. Not worth it though, we're just going to charge on to the end. Let's just smash this block and hit this spring. and simply repeat the process for the next one. Just take a wide jump here and spring our way across. I'll be right back. <laughs> Let's be careful not to fall this time. Just grab all these coins on the way and make a wider jump here and here. Get these coins in the air as we go, even though we can't see them, they're up there. And that unfortunately concludes the spring segment of the castle, but we have a bit more castle to go. We now have to face a mid-boss. This is Captain Syrup's personal guard, Yaburiki. In order to damage him, you'll have to dash into him from behind when his back is turned. Attacking him head-on or jumping on him will deal damage to you instead. As you can see, when Yabariki is attacked, he gets angry and charges across the room. Simply wait for him to calm down and repeat the process. Once you've damaged him four times, you'll defeat him and can move on. So we need to hit him just one more time. And there we go. And of course, we have one more gauntlet of flame turrets before we get to the top of the tower. 
<laughs> they kind of sound like an old telephone, don't they? More moles? I would advise just avoiding them if you can't stun them first. I want to sneak under these blades. And let's head into this door. And we've finally arrived. Here we are, face to face with the leader of the brown sugar pirates herself, Captain Syrup. So as you can see, she's rubbed this magic lamp which unleashes the game's final boss. That's right, for the final battle we're facing up against Captain Syrup and Dinpu the Genie. Dinpu has two main attacks. He can throw these sparks along the ground that you'll need to jump over, and he can summon miniature versions of himself to attack you as well. What you want to do is grab his lamp and toss it along the ground, which releases these cloud platforms that you can stand on. You can also bounce off the mini Dinpus and hit him as well. Jump on his head enough times, and you'll defeat him. While Dinpu does take more than the standard three hits that most bosses in the game take, I do feel he is not terribly difficult. Zinisuki of Parsley Woods was definitely a harder enemy. As long as you stay alert and are careful to dodge enemies, you'll be fine here. And just like that, we're done. Dinpu is defeated, Captain Syrup is powerless, and we're gonna get that golden statue. Man, Syrup, what is it with you and blowing up your own castle? Oh well, let's get out of here. And that explosion revealed the building-sized statue of Peach. Jeez, Princess, how much of an egotist are you? And here's Mario. I feel like he's all, Hey, Wario, thank you for getting the statue back for me. You're a true friend. Hey, wait a minute, come back here. I want to sell that statue for lots of money. Wah! But all is not lost. Wario still got a sweet magic lamp out of the deal. Maybe he can wish for something. Why don't we find out? Dinpu seems a lot nicer now that he's not trying to kill us. Seems to be offering only one wish instead of the traditional three. So, of course, Wario's going to wish for a beautiful castle to move into. But Dinpu's wishes don't come cheap. Dinpu's gotta get paid. And this is where all the coins and treasure that we've been collecting come into play. So here, it's going to tally up the 440 coins that we got in Syrup Castle first. And then, piece by piece, it appraises the value of and adds the totals of the treasures we've collected throughout the game. Now this process takes a long time, so I'm going to go ahead and skip to the end. So as you can see, we've ended up with over 94,000 coins. Now it's going to count down and add bags of money. This process also takes a while, so I'll see you when it's complete. Now let's take our 94,000 coins over to Dinpu and see if we can afford that nice new castle. And because our coins totaled above 90,000, which is the threshold for the castle ending, we do! Wario finally has a castle of his own, one he didn't steal from someone else this time, and his dreams have come true. For the moment, I'm sure he'll get greedy and go treasure hunting again, very soon. In any case, I'm gonna let you guys sit back and enjoy the credits. If you want to see some bonus content, just skip ahead to after the credits are complete, but for now, I'm gonna be quiet and let you enjoy the ending sequence. See you then! Thank <laughs> you. 
that's the ending. Now, we may have gotten the castle, but let's take a look at some of the other endings we could have gotten for differing amounts of money. First up, if you complete the game with less than 10,071 coins, which is hard to do, you get this birdhouse, and Wario is not pleased about that. Poor Wario. For a bit more, you get these barely more livable accommodations. Well, at least this one's an actual house, but Wario can do better. Now this is more like it. If you do get more than 90,008 coins, you get the castle ending that we already saw, but if you max out your coins, you get the next ending. For 99,999 coins, an amount that requires you to grind for coins even after collecting all the treasures, your prize is... Wario's very own planet, or possibly the moon. Either way, it's pretty awesome. And we've come to the end of my Wario Land Super Mario Land 3 Let's Play. It's been a fun ride, and I thank all of you for watching with me. This was actually my first Let's Play ever, and I do hope to get better as I continue making these. So, if you enjoyed this one, stay tuned, because I've got more planned for the future. Thanks so much for watching, and see you next time.